here with Dinko Pelic. He fought K1 this Saturday night. How are you feeling, Dinko? Yeah, I feel really good, actually. Um, a little bit of a... little bit of some bumps and bruises, but... Nothing on my face, more from just bumping off of him. So, <laughs> so yeah, I feel good, thank you. There was lots of trash talk before, online, even at the press conference, during the way he actually shoved you. Did that deter you, or did that affect your mindset going into the fight? It was um, the first time ever, and I'll compete for years, that anyone's ever behaved like that. So it was a new experience. It started shortly after the last show, and, and he went online and, you know, just started, I don't know, that's just his way of trying to get back onto another show, or cool, if that's, you know, come back to prove something or something like this, I don't know. But, um, yeah, no, it was the first time that anybody's ever been like that towards me. Uh, for no reason, I didn't do anything to to incite this or to start this or anything like that. So, um, you know, the way in was interesting, you know, because I knew that obviously the stuff that was said before, I was going to make it clear that I was there, you know. And um, I stood a little bit flat-footed <laughs> at the at the way in, and he 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 put one leg back and obviously pushed me with his head, and I didn't really have a choice but to to push back and. Um, then that kind of obviously stirred the pot for what was to lead on to the press conference and things like that. So, no, it didn't, it, I wouldn't say, I, maybe a long time ago, maybe years ago, um, I would have let that get the better of me. But, um, yeah, there was a game plan at hand and to break that game plan after months of working hard for it, just for the sake of getting angry because of just some stupid antics would have just not been worth it, so yeah. Stay a professional man, it's good, try. <laughs> Um, I wanted to ask uh, what the preparation was like in this fight, because you mainly fought in MMA. Um, what did you switch up? Was there anything you did differently in training to prepare for this fight? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's probably like, with MMA, it's like there's so many things that can happen. Uh, you know, you've got to be prepared to go to the ground. You've got to be prepared to stand it up if, if there's obviously an issue going to the ground. There's so many things that you have to, various game plans that you have to prepare for. But um, it was really cool for the first time ever to actually have just one game plan that we believed was essentially impenetrable. So there was essentially no plan B uh, because we were that confident that plan A would work. And watching the watching the, the footage back and hearing the, the commentators as well kind of say, you know, keeping him away with the teeth. And every time he stepped in, big shots with the knee. I mean, that's all I've really worked from this camp. Obviously under conditioning to be able to Man, I threw a lot of jumping knees, and if anybody knows, like even if you just jump on the spot like a few times, it's tiring. And uh, to do that consecutively, whilst defending, whilst fighting, whilst keeping pushing the pace forward, just had to keep my conditioning up and just just stuck to the game plan that um, that the guy said. Okay, it didn't exactly one hundred percent go all the way to the game plan because at the end of the first round, I really trashed my shin, and I thought, ah, oh, you know, I could feel this in the fight. It's not in the fight; you don't really feel anything. I thought, oh, no, man, I can feel this. <laughs> so I thought, oh, that's going to really hurt. So the second round was a little bit slower. But then my corner was just like, you know, you're slipping out of the game plan. In the third round, they're like, you've got to just push as hard as you can now. So in that third round, I just went for the knees again and just hammered it and hammered it and just tried to stick to the game plan as much as I could. And I think you could see from watching his fights and studying his movements and stuff before, he's a lot more active. And I think I, um, me keeping him away and just hammering him with the big shots of the knees really throughout whatever he was planning and you could see the frustration in his movements he just keep didn't have a, a, a response to it really so yeah man, the game plan was um was was solid and i can only thank adam for that and, and working with me um with the other guys and 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 one-to-one -one and just drilling this into me to the point that you know i was throwing knees in my sleep <laughs> yeah those flying knees are beautiful man i believe you went to the body as well in the clinch and you actually hurt him a couple of times but he did a good job of of covering up, I noticed his guard was quite well, and a lot of those power shots that you put through, um, your technique was crisp, but it kind of, it, it was hard to kind of place those shots to look for the knockout. Did you find that his defense was paramount, or? It's the mistake I made before um, fighting, um, chasing that knockout, believing so much that you're 100% gonna knock the man, it just doesn't come. So this time in my head, you know, even my coach showed it to me, he was like, bro, this, this guy, he can take it. He's, he's, he's solid chin, he can take it. Um, so I didn't hunt it, I just kept throwing the combinations and um, just keeping it, keeping the pressure constant. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, he, 
he, he really took some of those shots. I mean, even in the first round, I think the first jump, it's not so clear in the video, but I know that it, it slipped through, caught the hand a little bit and cracked him straight in the chin. And when he stumbled back and his eyes kind of went and then he looked back at me and walked forwards again, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> I was like, if he took that, I knew that I was, had a, was gonna have a war on my hands and that he was gonna really keep pushing forward. But yeah, yeah, switching it up to the body as well was key because I thought that's where he would probably be the weakest. Um, again, there was some things that were taken away. Like I thought I worked really well in the first round. I didn't want to give away too much. Like that's why I saved the spinning kicks for the third round, just to try and catch him off guard, which worked. Um, there was other things, there were other combinations, but they were taken away because at the end of the first, my right leg felt like it weighed. 50, 50 tons, it was just very hard to switch to the side and kind of change my angles. So I had to kind of really just stick to, to just going down the middle and working down the middle, so, yeah. Have you spoken about sticking to your game plans? That suggests to me that your mindset was right, you know, to get past all the, the craziness of the press conference and the intimidation, you stuck to your game plan. I mean, I just wanted to ask how experience, experience in fighting in Sparta Fight Series and having the team behind you, how much did that help your performance? Oh, massively. These guys, um, Obviously, um, Daniel Hill is coming over from Brazil and joining us as well. Um, just really boosted the morale to have um, to have those people part of the team as well. And the guys that we've already got, even some of the guys that, that don't fight, <coughs> excuse me, that have never competed, um, they're at a, pr a pretty good level to be able to spar with and work with in here. And when you're tired and stuff, put pressure on you. So um, everybody that was involved in the preparation was um, was massively influential and helpful. And, and beneficial in, in, in so many ways that uh, I don't have any words, but thank you to them, you know. Do you feel in Eastbourne where you live? Um, did that have sort of an advantage or even a disadvantage coming into the fight with such a massive crowd coming to see you fight? First time ever. Um, the last show, obviously, the fiasco of the pullouts and then the pullout on the day and then having to just do kind of like an exhibition battle was really. The, the pressure wasn't on there because it was just you know, exhibition boxing things. But this was the first time in like. 12 or something fights that I've ever, ever fought at home, all the other fights have been away. So um, it, 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 there was no pressure until literally about maybe an hour before. And I was laying upstairs and I kind of was like, oh no, I was like, I can't lose at home. <laughs> and it suddenly dawned on me, but no, it was fine. It was fine because in my head, nothing went crazy. I just, even as I was walking out, I was just saying to myself in my head repeatedly, just stick to the game plan. Don't get drawn into anything crazy. And then after that first round kind of went, I felt very comfortable. And I kind of felt what he had to what he had to offer with his hands and things like that. And I was like, there's no danger here for me. I felt comfortable. As long as I stuck to the game plan and kept my hands up, I was okay. And um, and then the crowd every time, you know, every time I jumped with one of their knees was really motivating because you could really hear the place go. And then it made me just want to jump even more and jump even more. I was like a kangaroo in there, man. <laughs> yeah, but no, the crowd was definitely um I would say in this case was was also beneficial. It was a hard-fought fight, man, but a very technical fight, and it went in your way uh, in the end, and you did everything right. It was beautiful to watch. I mean, I just wanted to ask you, what's next? What's the next fight? I never intended to even fight at this show. <laughs> <laughs> I had so much stuff kind of personally planned out of, um, out of um, the gym that I had to kind of work my way around. Um, don't know how happy I am. <laughs> Coach was unhappy a couple of times. I was like, no, no, I can't be here on Saturday, so I've got to go do this. So. It's how, like, if I, if, I, if I plan to fight, that's it. I like, you know, at least three months clear schedule and just be able to just work as much as possible. So, um, but obviously being called out and stuff was a new experience as well and, and all the fiasco that went with that. And um, so I, I had to, I had to, I can turn it down. Um, but um, there's no plan now. I've just got to recover and um, quite eager to get, normally when I finish a fight, I'm just like, man, like, just relax and stuff. But, um, the fact that I've kind of like busted my knee up a bit and I need to rest, it's kind of made me sit and I'm sitting at home and just like flipping my thumbs. It's like, I should normally be in the gym now or <laughs> doing something. Um, so there's no plan, just looking forward to just getting back to, to doing some training. It's been like months and months and months of just striking. I'm quite looking forward to actually doing some grappling stuff, especially now with, um, with Daniel down from Brazil um, teaching. So it's a massive opportunity that I, I don't want to let go by. So I'm just looking forward just to a little bit more recovery on my, on my, on my knee and stuff like that so I can just walk without the swelling and, um, and just come back down to the gym and, and absolutely not playing anything right now. Just going to just train and just enjoy, enjoy life and that's it. Well, thank you for joining us today. Have you got anything else to add to your fans out there? Uh, guys, thank you so much for all the support. It was, um, 
it was a crazy two days from the weigh-in to the, to the press conference to the fight. That was all in, what, 24 hours, but it felt like a week. Um, so that was that was really cool, the, the support that I had from everybody throughout that, and um, obviously on the night, and um, from everybody on my team and, and, and the staff and everybody, and Adam for putting on such a, such a great show and looking after everybody. There was not one moment where anybody went without anything or anything like that, so everybody was really well looked after. So just a big thank you for all the support, that's it. And thank you to yourself. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers, buddy.